beautiful banks of the Danube River, Visegrad, Hungary, an ancient place where the world's best archers have gathered for the 2010 World Archery Field Championships. Field archery, it's one of the most challenging forms of the sport, shot in three main disciplines, bare bow, the Olympic recurve bow, and the compound bow. 24 marked and unmarked distance targets lead to a series of elimination matches which culminate with the semi-final round. First up, the barebow matches, which saw Andrea Regel of Austria and Monica Jenkins of Germany advancing to the bronze medal matches. Eleonora Strobe of Italy and Christine Gautha of France would advance to the gold medal matches. On the men's side, Sweden's Bobby Larsson would face Sergio Cassiani of Italy for the bronze, Passi Akovicki of Finland, and Giuseppe Simondi of Italy shooting for the gold. Among the compound women, Gladys Willems of Belgium and Françoise Vol of France would shoot for bronze. Anne Lanty of Finland would face Isabel Danielson for the gold medal match. Now let's find out more from FITA's Tom Dillon. Okay, here in Visegrad we have 26 countries coming from four continents. And we'll see tomorrow uh, in the finals, we'll also have one of the finalists will be from Australia. So we'll have a wide variety of countries participating. Field archery means we're in a field, so which could uh, also be in the forest. Basically, we have uh, distances set out in the field, and the distances vary from 5 to 60 meters. Uh, and uh, there's a variation in uphill and downhill shots, and uh, archery is challenged on every target with a different challenge. It's very critical to have a very good first shot, because otherwise you start doubting on uh, what to do. In terms of the format of the competition, you start with a qualification round. They have all shot 24 targets unmarked, meaning they come to the shooting area and they have to determine the distance. Uh, and then they had 24 marked distances. The distances are a little bit longer. And we add those two scores to, together and that gives the qualification round score. So the team round is one archer from each bow type. We have the compound and the recurve, which we are used to in the World Cup as well. We also have the bare bow and bare bow means it's without any additional equipment. So there's no sight, no stabilizers. It looks like a bare bow. And they shoot together one arrow per archer. So it's very much a team. They have to rely on each other and learn from each other to make a perfect shot. Speaking of perfect shots, this is the closest you're going to see. That's Dave Cousins of the United States, who would end up in the gold medal final up against Kevin Wilkie of the United States, the World Games champion of 2009. Reigning world champion Rod Menzer of the USA would face Jeremy Thierry for the bronze medal match. On the women's recurve side of the field, Christine Bjerndahl of the legendary Bjerndahl archery dynasty would face Naomi Folkart for the gold medal final. Jessica Tomasi, the reigning world champion, would take on Elena Richter for the bronze medal final. World champion Sebastian Rohrberg of Germany, who just shot, ended up losing to this guy, Al Wills. So it's going to be Al Wills in the gold medal final. Meanwhile, on the other semifinal match, this guy, Michele Frangilli, ended up losing to Jonathan Shales. So it'll be John versus Al for the gold medal. In the World Championships, there's also a team round, which consists of the top shooters from each discipline shooting for their country in a team format. The women's bronze medal match was shot between Italy and France, both teams with world champions, including Jessica Damasi there in the middle. She's a two-time world champion. And Carol Ferro, also a two-time world champion shooting for France. By the time this rumble ended, it was Italy on top 51 to 43. medal match featured Sweden versus Germany. Sweden, Bjerndahl, Danielson and Bjorklund shot very well, starting out with a strong showing. A zero from Germany on the start gave them a slow start. Germany, however, managed to close the gap. Richter, Visa and Jenkins of Germany concluded with strong shooting. Sweden shooting a 2-4-3, but Germany winning the gold medal 50-47. was Italy versus Sweden for the bronze medal final and Italy started out strong shooting a 3-4-4 but Sweden stronger with a 4-3-5 to take the lead on the first target 12 to 11. The Swedish athletes continued solidly with a 5 and a 6-6. Six, six. The Italians matched it. Sweden keeping a one point advantage at the half. Italy performing well on the third target. The 6-6-5 six, six, a tough break for Sweden with a 2 but then two sixes for the last target. Italy turned the lead around and it was a big win for Italy. 
It was a spectacular gold medal final between Germany and Finland. Both teams duking it out on all of the targets, but Germany started to open up a bit of a lead about halfway through. However, Finland came back very strong. The last target at 50 meters for Berbo, 60 for recurve and compound, a high steep angle, and strong shooting from Finland's Berbo shooter, giving them a total of 56, a surprising and well-deserved gold medal for Finland. On to the individual gold medal finals, starting with women's bare bow, Christine Gautha of France versus Eleonora Strobe of Italy. Those two met at the World Games final last year in Chinese Taipei, where Strobe won. Now, on the first target, at 40 meters, both archers were equaled, earning 12 points each, as you just saw on the scoreboard. On the second target, this one, the precision birdie target, Strobe took a good advantage. She shoots a four, four, and six here. Gautha had a two, three and a five and by the time they finish with this target the shooter from italy will end up leading 26 to 22. Three. let's watch six five now Heading on to the third target, the mid-distance target, is at 20 meters. And both of these shooters are shooting very strongly. 5-4 liner and a 4. 4. 3. 6. So Strobe of Italy taking the lead now, 40 to 36. And now it's time for the last target, and this is one of the tough targets of this entire tournament. The last target that's coming up is a high angle target. It's at 50 meters for the bare bows. This is the 80 centimeter face at maximum distance for the bare bow category. Point lead for Miss Strobel right now. And there is a one zero liner. And that is not enough to keep enough pressure on the World Games winner and impending world champion Strobel. And a four. One last shot for victory. Five and the gold medal. It is a dream that came true. I worked very hard for this. And now that the competition is finished, I can still believe it. I'm happy for me, for my family that always helped me, and for my country I'm representing. The gold medal women's match faced off Naomi Folkart of GBR. And Björndal is a name you've probably heard before if you know anything at all about archery because her father is the legendary Swedish archer Jorn Björndal, multiple time field world champion. Now, Christine Björndal took an early lead 11 to 10 against Naomi after the first end. These high angle shots are particularly difficult because they really affect the form of the archer. And this precision target, the 20 centimeter birdie, is a particularly Naomi tough one to five. shoot uphill. Yeah. You see the center of the target, it's gold. Yeah, Inside of that is an X ring. The X ring is worth one six points. Outside the X ring, it's worth yeah. five points. And then the target is gradated down to zero from four, three, two. Five. The five, therefore, would be the outer gold. Four. So, at the halfway mark, after Christine Birendal took an earlier lead, Folkard shot three, five, five, and Miss Birendal shot a four, four, four to tie it up, 23 all. Now it's time to turn on the heat with this difficult uphill 25 meter shot, and that is a dead center six. X-ring, six points. So far, matching it up. Six. Three. Four. 
three costly for Naomi Folkard. Perfect score. And that is how you capitalize at an important time with three perfect sixes, Christine Bjerendahl pulling out a substantial lead. Five. Now it's the last target, which is a particularly difficult one. This is an uphill shot, maximum distance of 60 meters on an 80 centimeter target. The angle is particularly difficult because of two factors. One, you have to cut a certain amount because the distance is not based on the distance to the target, it's based on trigonometry. When you're aiming that much of an angle, you've got to remove some of the actual distance to the target. You're going to take about 5% off. The problem is you're going to take about 5% off. It's going to be different for different shooters and it is going to be different for different targets. Both archers ended up with a 4 for the first shot. And there's another four for final Naomi. Arrows. With a four point deficit coming into this final target, Naomi's gonna have to do better than that. All Christine has to do is stay with her opponent. Christine and Bjerndahl that actually locks up the, the gold medal. That is a clinch for the title. A brave last shot from Naomi, but not good enough to even score. Unfortunately, it is a big win. The family tradition continues for the Bjerndals. At the beginning, I had a little bit the shaky legs. But in fact, I was not as stressed as I imagined. I felt very calm during this final. Junior shooters are also represented at the World Championships in field archery, and it gave Hungary a chance to win a medal at the Field World Championships here at their home. Fanny Bognar representing Hungary versus the formidable Anastasia Anastasio, a World Junior Champion. Bognar was a little nervous on the difficult first target, started out with a 1, but continued on with a 5-5. Five, five. However, the highly experienced Anastasia Anastasio put a big lead on her opponent from Hungary, and by the time things were finished, Anastasia Anastasio was the winner of the bronze, 56 to 47. Shooting for the gold medal, representing Sweden, Isabel Danielson. Sweden's Isabel Danielson. Shooting for the gold medal, representing Finland, Anne Lanty. Anne Lanty, better known to many shooters as Anne Lorela, her maiden name, and it is the gold medal final, obviously, for compound, and here is the first target. Opening arrow is a four. Six. So a very strong start for Ann Lanty. Danielson with a five. Lanty with a five. So Ann Lanty keeping up the lead right now. Two arrows in, ten shots to go. Danielson with a four. This is a very tough target. It is. Uh, at about an angle of 35 degrees, it requires about a 6% cut, and it really messes with the archer's form. 6, 5, 4, and 15 points to start out the match, and Lanty taking the lead 15-13 over her opponent from Sweden. Now on to the second end. It's Danielson with a 6. And Lanty with a 4. And that is not helpful on that type Five. of target. Five points on that shot. Four. Again, damaging for Ann Lanty. Five, six, just kicked in. A six, a five, six. six for Danielson, and Ann Lanty now ends up trailing by one at the halfway mark. There's a small separation for Ms. Danielson's arrows, so we're going to let the judge make the final determination. And the judge ended up calling that arrow in. Isabel Danielson, maybe. Now onto the third six target. Dead center. And a six as well. This is a 25 meter shot on a 40 centimeter face at a moderate angle. So it's more of a precision Five. shot. Compounds should be able to keep it in the gold the whole time, but it's not always the case. Five points. Six. Isabel Danielson increasing her lead to two points. Six, five, six, giving her 47 points for Isabel Danielson. And that gave her a two-point lead, 47 to 45 for Anne Lanty, shown here. Now on to the fourth target. Four. Anne Lanty has shot a five. So a five six. from Anne Lanty on that shot. It and is it is going to be a tied score if there's another four out of Miss Danielson. And as you see it right there, that's the case. It's tied going into the final arrow. 
With 12 seconds left, Danielson just shot a three. Lanty shoots a five to become the new world champion, 60 to 58. Well, I felt quite uh, comfortable. Uh, I mean, um, I trusted myself and uh, I wasn't bothered by the, um, the heat. But today it was, of course, a bit cooler day than uh, earlier. Uh, I'm just so satisfied. <laughs> Finland, Passi Ayokivi, shooting for Italy on the right side, Giuseppe Semandi. It's the Barebo men's gold medal final. Mr. Ayokivi of Finland had already won the gold in the team event, while Mr. Semandi earned the bronze. Finland had beaten Italy in the semifinal the day before, so the rivalry continues here. Six. After the start, Ayokivi had a 6-6-4 six, six, on the first target. Semandi was caught kind of cold. 3-3-4. Three, three, Six-point lead for the archer from Finland coming on to this six, precision five, target. Liner, five. Now at this point, 16-10. to ten. Six. 14, Simandi turning up the heat now. Here's Ayokivi. Six. Both shooters at the pinnacle of performance. Six. But that's a perfect score. Ayokivi is still in position to keep his lead, but he needs to keep it in the gold. And he does. Five, just out. Now it's time for the third target. The third target for these shooters is a 20 meter, 40 centimeter face. Again, an uphill shot, which is always very challenging for an archer. The reason that an uphill shot is challenging is because it messes with your form. It actually shortens your draw length slightly. The biomechanics of an uphill shot require a bit of contortion to work around. Sometimes you'll see archers letting down because things just don't feel right in that kind of situation, and they'll start over again. Four. Five. This is really, really good shooting, especially with a bare bow. Just out. It's a five. Six, a five rather, five points. So a six, a four, and a five for the archer from Italy, a five, a five, and a five for Mr. Ayokivi of Finland. And he really made the most of his time on the clock. You didn't see it on screen, but uh, Ayokivi took things down to the very last few seconds. He's still in the lead right now, going into this last tough target, 47 to 43. Four. Samandi has a field world championship under his belt. He earned it in 2006 in Sweden. Four. With a lead like that, all Ayukibi has Four. to do is keep the arrow somewhere close to the gold. Three. The Flying Finn, Ayokivi becoming team and individual 2010 world champion, 57 to 55. We had a plan with my coach four years ago that in Hungary in 2010 I will be in the gold final. It was a very long path, I worked a lot, but I made it and it's great. I feel very, very happy. It's an all-British final between John Shales of GBR and his teammate Al Wills. John the Iceman and Al the most dangerous man on earth, Wills, or excuse me, the most dangerous archer on earth, Wills, depending on which side of the bar fight you might be on. <laughs> Al Wills started well with a 4-5-6, while Shales was a notch under with a 4-4-4. 
for a three point deficit at the very first target, 12 to 15. Here we are on the 15 meter precision target. Al Wills with a pair of fours so far. John Shales has been taking a long time to shoot each shot on this target. His first arrow was a three. Al Will's almost done now. Well, John Shells has got two arrows to go. There's three fours for 12 points for Al Will's. Second shot from John Shales catching the four. And another four from John Shales. The gap increasing in favor of Al Will's, 27 to 23 at the half. Now, it's time for the Iceman to turn on the heat a little bit if he wants to get anywhere near his opponent. This is the 25 meter, 40 centimeter target face, and that's how you do it. Al Wills with a five. Here comes all of John four. Shales. Sixes would be really handy right about now, and, and there it is. Six. And that is a five for John Shales. Six. Four. Al Wills is running out of time. You don't see it on the clock, but at the moment, Al Wills really needs to cut this shot loose. He's down to 20 seconds Five left points. on the clock. Oh, it paid off. He scored a four, six, and a five with less than 20 seconds to go and maintained a four point advantage as we head to the last and one of the toughest targets. This is a uphill shot, 60 Three. meters maximum range, the 80 centimeter face. Three. You see both archers with threes on that first shot. Three. That's another three for Al. He does have a comfortable lead, but it's not comfortable enough to give up too many shots like that to John Shales, who's been known to pull out some really good clutch shots when under pressure. And John four. Shales maintaining a four on that shot. Arrows. Will Z is going to need a really good shot here if he wants to clinch the gold. Well, that's how Six. you do it. Al Wills has clinched the gold medal with a six. Silver John Shales also John shoots a Shales. six to finish the match. Al Wills, the most dangerous champion man in archery, world. has another the title. World champion, 54 world. to 51. Al Wills! The Biagbajnok, Ellen Wills, New Britannia. Shooting for the championship of the world. World Target Champion, World Field Champion, Dave Cousins, USA! For the Championship of the World, World Games Champion, Kevin Wilkie, USA! Well, when it comes to field archery, you will not find two better competitors. Dave Cousins, of course, the 2002 individual field world champion, 2001 World Games winner, tons of titles in indoor and outdoor target archery. Kevin Wilkie, no slouch himself, the 2009 World Games winner and one of the top shooters in the United States. Dave Cousins starting out very strongly. Kevin Wilkie starting out almost as strongly. Very good start for Kevin with a 6-6-5. Now that is only the second four that Dave Cousins has shot in the entire tournament. Not a good time to do it. Now Dave uh, is trailing Kevin Wilkie by 17 to 15, but a strong comeback will be required from Dave Cousins. Well, he's known for that kind of thing. Here he is on the precision target. Dave with a five. So five and a five. Kevin opening with a four and a five. The Dave later with a five six liner. And that is a six for Dave Cousins on that shot. So five five six on this target. And Kevin with a four. Ouch. Four points for Kevin, and that's a disappointment for him. Four five four. He's a better shooter than that, but the target is difficult. So Dave Cousins now taking the lead by a single point at the halfway mark. We're headed on to another somewhat difficult target. This is the maximum distance 40 centimeter face. It is 25 meters to the target. K double the five. Ten, the ten. That's a six. Sixes would be handy. <laughs> and a six. 
So, a really strong showing from Dave Cousins, giving him a potential lead here. Unofficial three so, a three-point gap right now, 48 to 45 in favor of Dave Cousins. Now, going into the final target, this is a uphill shot. This is 60 meters, the maximum shot in field archery, 80 centimeter face. And with that six that was just shot by Dave Cousins, he actually puts himself in position to clinch the match on this shot. He does it. Dave Cousins has already clinched the world championship with an arrow left to go. Last one, a formality. And now here's the final shot for who will now be the silver medalist, Kevin Wilkie, Dave Cousins, taking another world title. Kevin Wilkie with a well-deserved silver medal, a tremendous performance from an emotional Dave Cousins. And so it concludes. The World Field Archery Championships in Visegrad, Hungary. The individual finalists, the elite categories, with Dave Cousins adding a title to his big collection of titles. And other winners, well, they're world champions for the first time in their lives. Al Wills of Great Britain. Christine Bjerendal of the Bjerendal Archery Dynasty of Sweden. Anne Lanty of Finland. Pasi Ayukivi of Finland. And Eleonora Stroba of Italy. A challenging venue, beautiful countryside, and the warmth of the Hungarian people making it a memorable World Championship event. As we leave the sunlit banks of the Danube River, we look forward to 2012 and the next World Field Championships in France.